Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome to Chatomics. Today, I'm going to show you how to do gene set enrichment analysis or pathway analysis using RNA sequencing data. Be sure to stick to the end. I'm going to also show you how to interpret the GSEA plot. So in one of my last videos, I showed you how to download a data set from GEO, load into DSIG2, and to do differential gene expression, and also how to make a heat map from the results. So today, I'm going to show you how to use, use the same results and to do a pathway analysis. Okay, so I will have the link for my previous video in somewhere in the screen and make sure you watch that video if you want to review that content. Okay, okay we will use the same data set uh, from GEO, this uh, it's a GSE uh, ID here. And I'm going to actually skip this because uh, I already uh, went through the whole process uh, in my last video, okay? So, but I will just uh, load the data, and first the library first, and then read that raw uh, count matrix, so rows are genes, columns are samples. So, so essentially those are two samples uh, under normoxic condition and two samples under hypoxic condition, okay? Just read in the counts, and if you look at the first six rows of the counts. Okay, so rows are genes, columns are samples, two under normoxia and two under hypoxia. Okay, and then we then uh, make a, uh, a count matrix from the data frame and then make a sample sheet and specify the condition. The first two are normoxia, then next to a hypoxia condition. Okay, so this is a sample sheet. So then we can continue to make a DSIG2 object. So by the way, this is just a, a routine DSIG2 uh, uh, processing steps. You can always refer to the DSIG2 tutorial online. It's very comprehensive. Okay, okay now we uh, make a DSIG2 object and run DSIG. Okay, takes a couple of seconds. So we will do those uh, normalizations and feeding the models. Okay, now it's uh, ready for do, doing the differential gene expression. So we use the results function and the contrast, meaning we want to compare hypoxia versus not moxia. Okay, so we get this result uh, object and we can turn it into data frame and uh, look at the first 30 genes, something like that. So those genes are highly upregulated on the hypoxic condition compared to normoxic condition. You'll notice that the several, the first 20 so genes, they have very small p-value equals to zero actually, and uh, those actually can be problematic uh, in our uh, gene set enrichment. And I will show you how to actually uh, uh, get around with it. Okay. Okay, now let's actually take the significant uh, upregulated genes. So it's uh, by setting a cutoff. So the cutoffs are kind of arbitrary. Okay, we will just filter the data frame, this results, by p adjustment value smaller than 0.01 and absolute log to full change greater or equal than 2. Okay, and then we get the row names. Okay, so the row names of the genes. If we look at the significant genes, so we get around 600 some some genes, okay? So now we're ready to do uh, one type of pathway analysis or so-called uh, over-representation test, okay? I highly recommend you to uh, go through this link uh, because we're going to use the cluster profile R package from Guangchuan Yu's lab. And the tutorial uh, for that package is really comprehensive and it talked about all the different aspects of gene set enrichment and first, you need to understand what is a pathway, right? A pathway is just uh, a, a group of genes that are functionally call, uh, uh, related and they're sequential, right? Gene 1 to gene 2 to gene 3, there's a signaling cascade between those genes. And a gene set is essentially just a group of genes in that pathway and then we actually uh, ignore all the uh, sequential orders, right? It's just a just a set, okay? 
Okay, we will first do this over representation test. Okay, and for to do that, we only need the significant uh, deregulated genes. Okay, let's load the library first, cluster profiler, and because uh, we have the gene symbols and all the uh, functions they require on trans ID as the input, so we want to actually uh, map the gene symbol to on trans ID first. Okay. So in cluster profiler, there is a function called bitr to translate uh, different gene IDs. Okay, so we specify this as significant genes. Remember, those are the six hundred some differentially expressed genes on the hypoxia. And then from type will be the symbol. Two type will be the entrance, and the organization DB will be this uh, org uh, Homo sapiens. Um, database. So this is also a bioconductor package, uh, annotation data, uh, data package. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so let's look at um, this map. So essentially it, will, it's a, it returns a data frame. So first column is the symbol that we have for the uh, significant genes. And the second column is the uh, mapped on trans ID. Okay. So to do over uh, representation analysis, we also need a list of background genes. So we will go back to the original results table, and we only and we filter out those uh, genes that has zero expression across all the conditions. So those are not detected in the RNA sequencing experiment. So we want to filter them out, and uh, uh, we. Uh, change uh, the row names to the colon and make it as a gene colon and uh, just get those column, this column, pull this gene. So those are the background genes. Okay. So if you don't understand the whole the command here, you can always do this like uh, step by step. So I usually just do ahead. So essentially, you. Uh, change that uh, row names, which are the gene, which is are the genes, to one of the column called the gene here. Okay, and then you pull this column out. Okay. Yeah, and uh, because we are going to use this uh, result so often, so I just uh, save it as a, a result underscore data frame. Okay, just save it as a new uh, uh, variable. Okay. Now we need to actually also uh, map the background genes or all the genes that are detected in this experiment to uh, on trans ID, right? So use the same function and the background genes from symbol to on trans, okay? okay? It will actually the same thing is the two columns, but now we have all the genes detected in this RNA sequencing experiment, okay? So first we will do this uh, GO term enrichment. So GO uh, stands for gene ontology. It defines the concepts or classes used to describe uh, gene functions. And it has like, different categories, if you know, like molecular functions, cellular component, biological process. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. And you will be able to specify those in, in the function, okay, in this, for example, enrich go function from cluster profile, okay, and the gene is the list, the significant genes, and we own, uh, this is a data frame, and we only take the on trans ID column. The universe is the background, right? So the background genes, or uh, so also the on trans ID, and we uh, we choose ontology to uh, biological process, okay. You can also change to different. Uh, Categories as well, and some p-value or q-value cutoff. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, takes a couple of second. Okay. Just be a little bit patient. Taking longer than I think. Uh, 
Okay, it's done. So we can use the head command to look at the uh, go enrichment result. Then you'll see uh, the first six go terms that are enriched uh, by, by your uh, differentially, gene express, uh, differentially expressed genes. And you see the top ones are uh, response to oxygen levels, response to decreased oxygen levels, response to hypoxia. This shows that our, like, uh, our experiment uh, is, is doing some, uh, something correct because we're comparing hypoxia, cells, cell lines on the hypoxia uh, versus on the namoxia. And indeed, the goal terms in which are uh, related to uh, hypoxia. Okay? And we can visualize the results by using the in, uh, in, uh, library uh, called enrich plot. We can plot a bar plot. This is easy, uh, easy to understand. So those are the uh, goal terms. And essentially, this is the number of genes that uh, the, uh, from the gene, differentially gene, express genes, how many of them are in those uh, gene sets, right, or goal terms. And the color just means to uh, adjust the p-value. The other one, we can do the dot plot. It's the same thing to describe this. Uh, it's a different figure to describe uh, the same actual data. And uh, same thing, okay, those are different go terms. Now the dot size is the number of genes in this go terms. And the x axis is the uh, gene ratio, essentially how many uh, counts here divided by the total number of uh, genes in each of the goal terms, right? So pretty neat. This is actually ready for a publication. Okay. So we can use different gene sets, right? Gene set enrichment analysis or, or, or over -present presentation analysis it all depends on what kind of gene sets you use, right? So one of the famous, uh, mostly commonly used is a database called MSIGDB, and they have the hallmark gene sets, okay? So, so MSIGDB uh, stands, stands for Molecular Signature Database. It's uh, curated by Broad, and it has different actual uh, categories of gene sets as well. So one of them is called hallmark gene sets, okay? There are other categories, C1 to C8 depending on your needs. For example, you have uh, uh, like immuno uh, immunological signature genes. So if you work on immunology, you may want to use C1, so C7, okay? Okay, uh, uh, and those gene sets, you can download from the uh, Broad website, but luckily there's an R package called MSIGDBR, uh, already curate, uh, all these uh, uh, gene sets uh, in, in in our object. So let's load it, and uh, we can use msigdbr species equals Homo sapiens, and to retrieve all the gene sets instead of uh, download all of them from the website. Okay. Hmm. Taking some time. Okay, it's done. Look at the first six rows. So, so this is a actual tidy uh, data frame. So you have uh, different. Uh, the first column, for example, is different categories. As I mentioned, C, C one to C seven and and also the edge. So then you have different uh, gene symbols and ensemble IDs, so everything here, okay? Okay, so we will actually just select the uh, gene set uh, name and also the uh, untransient uh, genes, okay, from, from this, uh, this database so and we should actually specify the category to equals to edge so hallmark and only select those uh, two columns okay the G, uh, gene set name and the entrance uh, gene id okay okay so 
we can look at the table. So this is just two columns, okay? The gene set name and the on-chain's ID, okay? So now we're ready to do this uh, uh, over-presentation analysis. Uh, so we can use this uh, more native uh, function called enricher. And uh, we still specify the on-chain ID for the significant deregulated genes. And this term to gene is this uh, data frame that we just generated, okay? M underscore T to gene. And the universe the background will be all the background genes taking the on-chain ID. Okay, let's do that. We can look at uh, the first several rows. Uh, okay. And we do see, okay, uh, hypoxia here. Okay, it's one of the top enriched uh, pathways, okay? Okay, so next step, uh, uh, we are going to do this gene set enrichment analysis. So this is a little bit different and I will actually show you how to interpret the GSEA plot. And for this analysis, we are going to use all the genes in this experiment but we pre-rank them by some statistics, okay? For the previous analysis, we only used the differentially expressed genes, only 600 something. And here we're going to use all the genes, okay? 20,000 genes here, okay? Okay, if you don't remember what is the uh, RISDF, let's take a look at the first six rows here, okay? Essentially just the uh, results table from D62 and we, uh, change that uh, gene column, okay, from the row names to this gene column here, okay? So to do this, we are going to use the statistics called signed full change times minus log 10 p-value, okay? So the most highly upregulated genes will be in the front, okay? If we use this uh, statistics to rank all the genes, okay? So first, we'll just mutate and add a new column and uh, uh, calculate that statistics, okay? And then we will left join this background gene map because we want the Antrans ID in the same data frame. Uh, and then we arrange by descending uh, of that stat statistics we just calculate. So from high to low, okay? Let's do that. And if we look at this new data frame, we have this new column on chain ID like by left join in this uh, data frame. And we also have the signed rank uh, stats, statistics for, uh, for, all, for each gene, right? And highly upregulated is in the top. But because some of the genes, they, are, have, they have P value of zero, so you get this infinite and you will see that actually will cause problems for the downstream analysis. But anyway, let's try it. So, so we need to create a new gene list, uh, which is uh, use this, this statistic column, okay? And the name of this uh, vector will be the on transit ID, okay? So if you look at the total number of that list, it's like 20, 4,000, okay, all the genes in the, in the genome that are detected by this experiment. So now we can use this function called GSEA from cluster profiler and specify this gene list, this pre-ordered pre ranked gene list, okay? And this term to gene would be the same actually uh, uh, data frame or the gene set that we, uh, we uh, got from MCDB, okay? the hallmark gene set. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, it says, not all stats values are finite numbers. Okay, so we need to do some, some trick. So what I'm going to do is for those, uh, so I will first calculate this negative log 10 p value. And if that is infinite, then I will just use an arbitrary big number. For example, uh, let's look at the uh, results data frame first. Like then we look at the sign rank stats here. Okay, so 
this is like 300, 300 something here. So I will just make a thousand so it's kind of actually bigger than those ones, okay? okay? So after I change that and then I recalculate the sign rank stats using the sign log to full change in times of negative log 10 p value. So essentially I just change those infinite numbers to a arbitrary big number uh, uh, 1000, okay? And now let's look at the first several rows. Now you have a thousand here, okay? Now let's uh, make a gym list, again using this column as the value, and use this column as the name of those va this vector, okay? Okay, now we can rerun the GSEA function. So now it's not giving you an arrow. Okay, it's done pretty fast. Let's look at the first several, okay? Pathways, oh, that are enriched. Uh, it has G2M, E2F, MIC, epithelium to mesenchymal transition and hypoxia. Okay, it's kind of reassuring that we see this hypoxia pathway is always sh uh, showing up in our uh, gene set enrichment analysis, okay? So we can look at this data frame. So this EM2 is a GSEA object. So, so if you look at this EM2, if you use S sign, to, you can access all those elements in this object. So we will just look at the result, which is a data frame. So let's look at it. Essentially, those are the gene IDs. So the first column, the second column is a description, it's the same thing. The set size and the enrichment score, or then this is the, um, okay. So negative uh, uh, enrichment score, which means this pathway is actually negatively regulated, downregulated. And if it's positive, it means this uh, pathway is positively, uh, possibly uh, regulate or upregulate and you see actually hypoxia and you see this uh, score is positive so you know those pathways are possibly uh, regulated or upregulated on the hypoxia condition which makes sense okay now we can visualize uh, the gene set enrichment analysis results you use, use the GSEA plot function okay and then we will just choose uh, two different uh, gene sets here, like the checkpoint, the G2M checkpoint, and the hypoxia, okay? So one is negative regulate, uh, down regulate, the other one is uh, up regulated, okay? So let's do that, P1, P2, and let's plot those two together, okay? Let's look at. It. Is this familiar? Like you might have seen this type of figure from all sorts of different publications like this, right? And you see here the uh, x-axis is the genes that are ranked, right? So we pre-rank all the genes from highly upregulated to uh, highly downregulated, okay? And each bar here just show shows you that gene that in this gene set, right? So those bars are genes in this G2M checkpoint, and those genes are the genes in the hypoxia. Right? So the XX contain all 20, 24,000 genes, but the, the black bar only show you the genes that are uh, in those uh, gene sets. And you can see those genes, they tend to actually enrich in the, in, in, in the lower actual rank, so which means they are highly downregulated, right? And for hypoxia genes, they tend to actually be in the front of the gene, uh, uh, this uh, this rank, so which means hypoxia pathway is upregulated. So I hope you understand uh, the GSEA plot and how to interpret it. Okay. Okay. 
That's it for today, and I have an important thread on background gene selection for this thread make, uh, by Mark and Zeman. Make sure you read it. And also I have a Twitter thread, uh, including all the literatures that you want to read to fully understand gene set enrichment or pathway analysis. So make sure you subscribe, subscribe to this uh, channel, Check Armics, and you can download the uh, uh, Armacdown file to follow this tutorial. That's for today, and see you next time.